Welcome. My name is Kat Lancaster, and I am one of the behavior support specialists here at the Northwest Arkansas Education Service Cooperative. Today, we are going to discuss an intervention tool that has been used to promote cognitive flexibility and consider multiple viewpoints for social problem solving. In the classroom, we all have students that erupt when confronted with social situations that are problematic. The root of problems stems from difficulties with considering the multiple perspective of others. This is a foundational skill that is vital for life skills in general, as well as in the classroom. Problem solving skills involve tasks such as organization, perspective taking, working memory, inferring, predicting, sequencing, and solving problems for academic and social situations. Social problem solving skills are key to developing interpersonal skills for classroom participation, group interactions, and building positive relationships with others and peers and staff. Whenever a student encounters cognitive uh, inflexibility issues due to their deficits or delays in higher thinking skills, learning can come to a standstill. These social problem solving issues can also impact the overall operation of classroom activities when these situations escalate and take over learning of the student and others. In the book by Scott Bellini, PhD, called Building Social Relationships, a systematic approach to teaching social interaction skills to children and adolescents with ASD and other social dif difficulties, discusses an intervention tool called Test of Evidence. Fenberg and McClure of 2002 introduced this cognitive behavioral strategy to assist students in recognizing and processing disruptive beliefs that occur in a social situation. This intervention best applies to students that demonstrate some of the following characteristics. Overgeneralizations. All the teachers yell at me. Faulty conclusions. Nobody ever plays with me. Faulty assumptions. Billy wants me to mess up. He always sets me up. Or rigid beliefs. I get made fun of at math because I hate it. I never get math. It is always best to address social situations using toe after the student has had time to calm down and be in a state of comfort. Remember, an emotional mind is irrational at the time. Make sure you provide a place that is free from distraction and makes the student feel at ease. Begin the intervention with small conversations about what has been going on with the student and just spend time getting to know them and make them feel valuable by paraphrasing what they said as well as inferring into what they might be feeling. But always ask if your perception is really matching how they feel. When we start to begin with toe, we always use the why. This helps develop the different points of view for social problem solving situations. In the next part, we consider the elements that are in the environment that we see, hear, know as rules, or determine as feelings. And finally, we integrate all of the components from why and their elements to develop these points of view or different perspectives of self and others. Toe consists of the following. The first step is the belief statement. Next comes the supporting evidence. 
followed by contrary evidence, then alternate belief, and the final conclusions. Let's start with the belief statement. What they do here is the students generate their own statement that is about their perception of their belief. They also are responsible to hear and paraphrase the belief statement from the other person as well. Next, we're going to talk about the supporting evidence. Here, the students will find facts in their environment that support their belief. We usually target anywhere from two to four pieces of evidence. And students often require modeling at first to begin this process. You can use guiding questions to get evidence like, what did you see? What did you hear said? Who was around you? What do you know is the social rule about that type of situation? How did you follow the rule? What did you see the other person's face, tone of voice, or body posturing do? And could you figure out how they felt? Now, the student listens, listens to the supporting facts from the other person as well. After the conclusion of the supporting evidence, we move to the next step of the contrary evidence. The student and other person generate statements that they can see, hear, feel, or know about rules to get their, their parties to prove their statements wrong. Very often, this also requires direct modeling or prompting to get these statements going, since this is where the area of cognitive flexibility deficits are most evident. On the fourth step, the students have a person try on an alternate statement or belief that is different from the original statement. The students develop a statement in this step that incorporates the elements of the facts from the contrary and supporting evidence to make this new belief statement. The students and the other person will generate a statement of their own. And finally, in the last step, review both sets of evidence from supporting and contrary to help the students and other persons see how to identify multiple or conflicting explanations and seek out facts to make up their own conclusions. Whatever you do, do not prove that the child's statement is wrong. You just often state you see the same issue, but it's in a different way than sometimes other people see. In this example, you will see we had a situation between Tom and Billy. And the student that's having cognitive inflexibility deficits is Tom. He feels that everybody hates him. And Tom says, well, Billy never plays with me at recess as his belief statement. Billy, on the other hand, said, well, I've stopped asking Tom to play because he often ignores me. After the students have generated and paraphrased these statements back and forth, then we move to the supporting evidence. Tom gives two pieces of evidence and Billy gives two. Remember, two to four pieces of evidence are allowed in these steps. Tom feels that Billy walks away from him all the time and he sees this happening. And then Tom also sees himself being alone at recess. Billy uses the statements I, that Tom never answers him when he asks him to play. So he bases that off of what he sees and hears. 
And he also bases it off of what's something he sees occur where Billy often plays by himself at recess. Now, on the other side of that, the contrary evidence, they have to find something that's from the other person's point of view by what they see, hear, know, or feel. So Tom notices, well, Billy does talk to me. And he also noticed that he can play with other kids and that it doesn't always have to be Billy. But Billy also notices that Tom maybe is afraid to play or he doesn't know how to play. And Billy also notices that Tom wants friends like everyone else. Now, when they have generated both the supporting and contrary pieces, we come down and make a new belief statement and give things for them to say that could be like for Tom noticing Billy wants to play with me, but I need to say yes or no when he asks me. And then Billy might say Tom wants to play, but he needs help with knowing how to respond to my invitation. And then finally, a statement for both students to remember is that people like to be around each other and not everybody hates me. We need to practice asking and showing how to play at recess. I hope that you found this strategy very helpful and something that you can apply easily within your classroom um, when dealing with very um, difficult situations that occur sometimes socially between students. Um, I've also found that this strategy is also helpful in using it when um, there's sometimes even student and teacher conflicts and it helps a student understand a teacher's perspective as well as a teacher understanding a student's perspective. And it just overall promotes strong relationship building because we're learning to hear and validate each other's point of views. Again, if you need any uh, additional information or resources pertaining to this strategy, feel free to contact us through our ARBSS.org website. Um, and please let us know how we can be further assistance to you. I hope you have a great day and take care.